Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and today I'd love to talk to you about what I use in my kitchen to preserve my harvest. There are a couple of extra things that I haven't got here yet that I'll talk to you about at the end but for now let's go through what I do use and why I love them. First off is my Excalibur Dehydrator. I was looking for a very long time for this and I get heaps and heaps of questions on Instagram about my dehydrator. Um, I chose this one because it was all stainless steel and glass. I didn't want to be using plastic. I know it's a low heat um, and I know it's BPA, BPA free, but I didn't want to be using plastic um, on my home grown organic produce. So I um, went to the top of the range and I got stainless steel. Got stainless steel trays. You can get flat trays um, to do your leathers on. I meant to order some when I bought my dehydrator and I got it. <laughs> um, so I think in the future I'll probably um, either purchase some or get some made uh, because using um, greaseproof paper while it works is wasteful um, and I don't really like using the silicones on that in my food. So um, I've been really, really happy with this. I can take all the trays out and make yogurt in here. Um, I can fit my big jars in here, which I make my yogurt in. Um, and I also make them in these jars too, so I can get two layers in there. Um, I can adjust the temperature. The only thing is, um, it's in Fahrenheit and it doesn't have a Celsius option. Um, so it goes, let's turn it on. It goes all the way down to 95 Fahrenheit, and I think it goes up to 160 Fahrenheit. Let me just check. Um, I don't often use the high settings. I do use the high settings for beef jerky or um, venison jerky. Um, so yes, it goes up to 165 Fahrenheit. I really like that it has a range of temperatures. I can remove the trays. I can ferment my yogurt in here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it about my dehydrator. The next thing that I use are my two big stock pots. Uh, I do have a Fowler's, um, a really big Fowler's pot, but I don't like using it, so I'm thinking of selling it. The reason why I don't like using it, it has this really handy hole in the side of it where you stick the thermometer in. And that's super cool, but I always overflow it. <laughs> the amount of times I've had water gushing out everywhere all over my stove top, um, I care to forget about. <laughs> so um, I don't like using it for that reason. I do like that it's got um, this disc at the base of it um, with holes in it so the water um, can go through it and they don't sit on the bottom of the pan. Um, really love that function but the hole just find it really inconvenient and a really inconvenient spot and really annoying that it overflows and you can't see in um, to see how far up the hole you are. But I use these for um, water bathing my cans um, or making uh, really big batches of um, jams or um, like welling up my beetroot so I can pop them in jars. I do find they're a little bit thin on the bottom so um, sometimes they do stick. But if I'm just water bathing, these are fine. I'll probably get some heavier duty ones with a thicker base for doing my, um, my jams and and stuff like that, things that tend to stick or burn. The next thing I love are my really big jars. Um, if I was to go again, I would buy a different brand. So these are not um, mason jars, they are a ripoff of mason jars. I found the company to be hard to deal with, but I also found the jars to be not as good quality as my mason, my proper US um, mason jars. So. These are great for pickling in, for fermenting in, and for preserving a huge amount of produce in. I do have um, a heap of beetroot in some of these, and they're really good for putting whole pickles in. Um, and like I said, I like uh, making yogurt in here. And I also like fermenting in them. And when I ferment in them, I use these things. These things are called a pickle pipe. This is a rip-off version of a pickle pipe. Um, much, much cheaper. I have got the true pickle pipes and these rip-off versions and I find them to be the same. These fit inside the ring for the wide top mason jar, so you can use them on the one litre. Um, I don't know if they come in in a half litre. I think it's more gallons that they um, measure these in. Um, but they do come in a one litre, a smaller version of this. 
and it's just a wide mouth jar, any wide mouth jar, and you can ferment in them. So really good for sauerkraut or fermented pickles. Um, I've fermented garlic in here. So what these do is they allow the air to escape. They're kind of like a baby bottle um, on the top, but they don't let any of the air to come in. So I really, um, I've been really happy with these, um, but one day I hope to upgrade it and I'll talk about that in the end. Um, I really like having a range of jars. These are great for um, apple juice. We forage for apples along the roadside um, and we water bath it in these. Um, and we also make tomato sauce and barbecue sauce um, and pasada in these. And they're just really handy to have. So I always save my pasada jars. Now that I don't purchase any anymore, my friends and family will save their jars for me. Um, another thing that I love are these Grolsch bottles. Um, they're a beer bottle, but they have a really awesome seal on it, unlike any other. And you can preserve cordials in here. Um, and I also make my kombucha in here and it allows it to get super fizzy because it's got amazing seal on it. Um, and I haven't had any issues. I think I had one um, explode on me once, um, but that was just a random freak accident because I've never had that happen again. I also like having smaller jars, these wide top um, WEC jars, they're really good for yogurt um, and they fit in the dehydrator really, really nicely. So um, I can get two levels in there, like I said before, and ferment a big batch of yogurt. They're also really good for pickles and big items that need a bigger mouth than say something like that. But I always keep, I always re um, recycle all my jars. A lot of people will tell you you can't, but I've always had success doing that. If you find the seal in your lid is going, you can buy new lids for these jars. Um, you just pop online, Google it, and you should come up with a good size of, um, a good range of lids for all your um, jars. And that's particularly good for your Posada jars, for these tall jars. Next thing I like to have in my preserving kitchen is a good thermometer. I have several. This is one type. I've got one, um, like a milk frothing one, but with a really long um, time <laughs> uh, to pop into my milk if I'm making yogurt or jams and stuff like that. Great, so you can get your temperature, so you know where your water's at, um, and when you're bathing them, water bathing them, um, you can figure out how long they need. So I find these really handy for that. These tongs are great. They are for picking up bottles out of the hot um, pots when you're boiling them. That way you don't burn yourself. I also like to use a tea towel. So I'll use this on the top to pull it out of the water and then I usually have a tea towel to grab it. Um, I just find it a little bit more secure because they can wobble and I'll hate for it to drop and smash, especially after I've um, gone to all the effort of preserving. The next things I like to have are a naturally fermented vinegar. I used to use home brand vinegar and that is um, distilled. Um, I never had any issues with it. I used it for so long, I never had any issues with it, but I found this and I found that it was naturally fermented, made in Australia. So I do like to use it. It is a lot more expensive, but I find it gives a better product. And because I'm going to the effort of growing all my own food organically, I think that having a naturally fermented vinegar to preserve it with is just a better way to go. I also like to use apple cider vinegar in some of my preserves. This is a local farm. It's delicious. You can drink it as is. You can have a shot of it. Um, and it's got live cultures in it and it's organic. So I like to buy organic where I can. It doesn't always happen. Um, at the moment, I'm having a hard time finding organic sugar. Um, but if you can make the switch out to some organic products, then that's better than none. And I think that something like this gives a better finished product, um, especially if you're making something like piccalilli, which I use this for, or um, a rhubarb um, fermented drink. I think if you're using a really high-end product to go into it, um, that you're going to get a better product at the end. So um, I really like this for those two products um, specifically. Next thing, I use a lot of sugar. Um, I can't find this easily, organically at the moment. I couldn't even get my hands on conventional stuff um, during the first wave of lockdowns. 
I like to use raw sugar, that's just a personal preference. You can use um, white sugar, you know, that's fine. I did have a dark brown sugar that still had the molasses in it. I found that was a little bit too strong to preserve with. Um, I did buy it um, a few years ago. I bought a 25 kilo bag and I bought it to make kombucha with, but I found that um, it changed the flavor too much, even though it had all the minerals and all the, the better stuff in it. I found that we weren't drinking it because it was just too strong, too molassesy. So I find that raw sugars, um, it's a nice compromise. It's still bad for you. I, I know all that, um, but I like <laughs> I like raw sugar over white sugar in my preserves. So I use this for my jams, for my pickled beetroot, um, and all those sort of pickly things, and in my um, tomato sauces and barbecue sauces. Um, you need a bit of sugar, and so this is what I choose to use. And lastly, my kiln dried sea salt. There are so many salts out there. This is my personal preference. I did hear recently that um, sea salt can contain microplastics, so that is something I will consider in the future. Um, but now I have this huge bag, which should last me hopefully to the end of preserving season. Um, it is Australian salt. It's um, naturally kiln dried. I don't like um, mined salt, although I do use Himalayan salt every now and then. Um, it is a lot more expensive, so if you're going to preserve with it, um, maybe there's that to weigh up as well. Um, but everything we have basically is contaminated somewhere somehow. So I'm going to try and forget that it contains microplastics um, and use up this bag, and then I'll reassess um, once we've finished it. So that is what I use here to preserve my harvest with. Um, a couple of other things that I would love to get in the future. I'd love to get a pressure canner so I can preserve low acid foods. And I'd love to get a crock so I can make big batches of sauerkraut in them um, without using these jars. They have, <clears throat> they have a rim of water around them and a lid that sits into that. So that's how um, it allows the um, gases to escape from the ferments and none of the con like potentially contaminated air to get in because there are moulds and stuff floating around everywhere. So um, that would be amazing because I have four huge cabbages ready to pick. They're about four, kilo, four to five kilos each. And so it would be amazing to make a huge batch of sauerkraut that we can dip into throughout the winter. Um, but instead, I'm going to have to make them in these two litre jars, which is completely fine. It's just, I think, a bit more convenient to have a crock for something like that. Um, so that is it. That is my preserving outfit and um, what I hope to expand to in the future in my preserving outfit. I hope you found this helpful if you're starting off in your self-sufficient journey and preserving some of your harvests that you're bringing in from your garden. Thanks again for watching. I'm Natalie from Living the Dream Permaculture and I'll see you next time on my channel. Goodbye.